A few months ago, we made this little dancing Freddy, and you guys seem to really like it. This time, we're going way bigger. We're gonna make a full-size spring trap animatronic. And to be true to character, we're gonna make it out of this animated skeleton, because spring trap is more than just an animatronic. William Afton's body got crushed inside of the suit and became one with it. First step, paint him purple. <laughs> we do need to make him fleshy, you know, put a little meat on his bones. You got your patient on the table here? I do, he's ready. This is what the Halloween industry calls corpsing a skeleton. There are a bunch of different ways to do this, but the way I like to do it is using a little spray glue, laying a layer of that down, and then tapping on some cotton to give it some texture. I like to work in small sections so that the glue is still wet when you tap your cotton down. And then later on, we're gonna come back and go over the cotton with latex. He's so fuzzy through his awkward fuzzy phase, but we're gonna fix that. We're gonna take some liquid latex and then we're gonna tap down just the cotton, not the whole thing, and that's gonna give us this really great skin texture. There's another really popular method of corpsing a skeleton using saran wrap or like a plastic tarp and a heat gun. It almost has like this mummified look, but for this guy, I want him more meaty, so we're gonna use the other method. Ultimately, there's no right or wrong way to corpse a skeleton. Just experiment, have fun, and keep in mind the story of your character. Now it's time to move on to paint. Because his whole body is gonna be covered in a suit, you're not gonna really see a lot of this except for through the cracks in his suit and the seams, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it, but I do want it to be really bright red and stand out. What's going on? I don't like it. I don't think this is working. My original thought was to have like some red fleshy patches with some bones sticking out, but it just doesn't look good. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna try something else. I'll be back. Just like when we made Freddy, we can actually download a 3D model of Springtrap and get a really good look at the parts of his suit and all the little details. By the way, if you ever wanna look at this kind of stuff, there's a great website called Sketchfab where you can type in the name of your favorite character and there's probably a bunch of 3D models that you can look at right in your web browser. For the spring trap suit, we're actually gonna 3D print a lot of these parts, and then we're gonna cover them in fabric and paint everything just to kind of give it that withered old spring trappy look. 3D printing here will allow us to be super accurate to the actual character, which is our main priority. The only downside is it's gonna take a while. There's a lot of parts and they're pretty big, so we're gonna get the printer going so that we can work on other stuff in the meantime. Okay, I did a test on the leg. I painted the whole thing red and then did a black wash over that. I just think that looks better. Kind of muscly, kind of like who knows what happened in that suit. Nobody Nobody knows what happened in the suit. It makes no sense. Where no. are his bones? Where did, did they his just bones get crushed? Go? I don't know. I feel like now we need to go back in time and just spray paint the whole thing red. Lesson just, learned. Yeah. Sometimes you change your mind. It's okay. Yeah. And just make a little more work for yourself. <laughs> He's all red. That took a lot more red paint than I thought it would, but I think he looks cool. Now I'm gonna put a black wash over the whole thing and that's gonna seep into all those nooks and crannies and really make all the texture stand out. Most of the characters in Five Nights at Freddy's are animatronics, but this one was designed to be both an animatronic or a suit that somebody could wear. Long story short, the guy got in the suit and it malfunctioned and the metal spring locks that wrap around everything to hold it together, they trapped him in there forever, hence the name Spring Trap. There's more to it than that, but for our purposes, we need to worry about the metal spring locks because that's what we're gonna build next. To make them, we're gonna use this EVA foam and we're gonna cut some strips and then we're gonna paint it to look like metal and wrap it around the skeleton. I'm gonna come up to where we wanna put the spring lock and I'm gonna wrap it around kinda of where I want it to go. We'll mark it, we'll cut it to size, and then we'll put some glue on the ends and basically glue them on one at a time and just work our way across all the limbs. Piece of cake.
So inside his body, or under his suit, I should say, there's like these red rope looking things. They kind of look like intestines, so that's what we're gonna go with, they're intestines. They're in places that don't make any, like why are there intestines around his ankles, for example? Doesn't make any sense, so don't even worry about it. But we need to make those. We started with some red yarn. We did some tests where we like wrapped it in latex, uh, and then we did another test. Yeah. And we actually tried some pool noodles. And then we thought about using this EVA foam dowel, but that would be really expensive. But what we ended up with is something called backer rod, and it's foam tubes meant for filling gaps. <laughs> it's for weather stripping. This whole bag was three bucks. And we got two different sizes, because he does have several sizes of intestines within him, so. These turned out great, super happy with them. But I think before we put them on, maybe we should put all the rest of the things together first. That way we can assemble it all at once. Yeah, there's a whole lot of parts. There is, and like if we start going one way and then it doesn't work, but then if we have everything made and it doesn't work, I don't know. Let's just keep building. How's it going? Good, it's going really good, I think. Look, look at all these pieces that we printed so far. Springtrap's been around for like 30 years and his suit's falling apart and it's all decayed and withered. So that's what all these kind of cracks and holes are. This thing took, I think like seven hours to print. One of the pieces like failed and I had to glue it back together. It's been, been a thing. I'm hoping that the seams on the outside are not gonna matter because the next thing we're gonna do is cover these in green fleece to give it that fur suit look. Knocking on wood, we've had no major problems so far. We do have a lot more printing to go, but so far the bamboo has been awesome. So I'm gonna start covering these things in some green fabric. We went to the fabric store and luckily we found this awesome green fleece stuff. It's not too fluffy, it's just got like the right amount of fuzz and I think the color matches pretty well. I think I'm just gonna roll it on there and make some darts wherever I need to. It went on mostly smoothly. This is the only place where it bunched up a little bit. I think I'll have to trim that. Other than that, I think it's good. So I'm gonna start trimming all the extra off. I'm trying to cut at the seam here so that it lines up and I don't have any gaps. It took an hour and a half to cut out all these little holes. I've got to find a faster way to do that. But look at them, they look awesome. So I think it was time well spent. Now I just have like a gazillion more pieces to go. So I will see you later. A few days later, we had all the parts printed and we ended up using a utility knife to cut out all the holes, which went way faster. Look at them, they're mostly done. Okay, we're doing the hands and we're gonna start with the skeleton hand the same way we did with the rest of the body. This is gonna be great because we can put all this stuff on top of it, but we can also use this little ball joint thing to attach it back to the wrist, which is gonna be really helpful. Watch, it can fit inside the hand and this thing sticks out the back to attach to the arm. For inside the fingers, we're gonna use this bendable wire. One trick that we've learned is instead of just having one wire per finger, we actually make like a U shape, which is gonna work as two fingers. In between all the little finger pieces here, there's like these knuckles, and we're gonna use this little piece of pool noodle to go in between all the fingers. Cut a bunch of pieces of pool noodles, painted them all silver, and we also painted the hand thing red. I was able to mostly fit it inside the glove, and then some hot glue will hold it in place. Then it was just a matter of sliding the knuckles and the fingers onto the wires. Technically it worked, but it really wasn't looking right. That looks terrible. I hate it. It looks like we just stuffed balls of tin foil in between the fingers. I think the wire method is working though. Like if we can ignore the giant silver weird things, what do we do? <laughs> do we just start over? We have foam dowels we could use. Hmm, okay, plan B. Round two, we made some new knuckles with this EVA foam dowel and then we painted it silver again. Okay, that is way better. And I like that the knuckles are kind of roundish too. So like, you know, it actually looks like a, like a knuckle. And check it out. We have a hand and it looks awesome. Look at that. Ah! I'm so glad we redid those pieces. Okay, we got the three arm pieces put on. They're just temporarily on there. We shoved some bubble wrap in, so that works for now. And we just really want to make sure he works. These are really, really heavy. Heavier than I expected. What was that? 
Oh. Oh. No. No. <laughs> oh. Shoot. We have a problem. What is happening? Um, see this? Now watch this. Is it, it's, it's too heavy. Yes, it's too heavy. This animatronic has this feature where you can adjust the arms. So you can kind of decide like what position they're in. And then underneath there, there are some servos that are actually moving the arms. No. I don't think the servo would have any problem moving this weight, but these clicky adjusty things can't handle it. Crap. Well, now we're just gonna throw the whole thing away. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. It's been so many days, you guys. It took so long to make these. And these arms don't come off, so I don't even know how we would fix that. <laughs> Just gotta make it lighter? Like remake the arm pieces, maybe? Uh, We're like a week away from Halloween and this needs to be done. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I just have to go think about this. Okay, we needed a break, so we're outside and we're gonna try to figure out where we're gonna put spring trap on Halloween night. Normally over here is very dark and boring, so we have to keep all the fun stuff on that side, but this year we got these next level smart holiday lights from Govi, who are the sponsor of today's video. Govi's a company that makes super popular holiday lighting and their new pro permanent outdoor lights are awesome. We put them up all along our roof line and not only do they look great, but we can leave them up all year long. You can use them for Halloween or Christmas or just leave them on for every day. You can control the lights from a single point like the Govi app or use smart home things like Matter or voice control with Alexa. I really like their app because there's tons of preset effects and holiday scenes, but also you can sync the lights to music. It's amazing. So much fun and super simple. You can cut and extend the light strands with these adapters. So if you don't have like one continuous straight roof line, you can start and stop the lights to match your house. They're weatherproof too. So once they're up there, we don't have to worry about them at all. You can connect up to 200 feet on a single strand and you don't even need hardware. They have these sticky backs and you can peel this off, stick them right to your eaves. It's super easy. If you wanna check out these lights or any of the other awesome stuff that Govi has, click the link in the description. We're excited to have these up year round, but especially next week for Halloween. I think we found a solution. What we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the forearm and the hand and maybe this part too with foam. And that should be a lot lighter. Since we have a 3D model already, it should be pretty easy to make a pattern off of this. To make the pattern, we're gonna cover this whole thing in saran wrap and then wrap it all in duct tape really tight and that's gonna give us the form. Then we'll trim it, cut it off, and then from that we can flatten it out to make our pattern for the EVA foam. This is basically the same thing we did on the glowing spider, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, it's a good technique. All right, so this is EVA foam. It's four millimeter, and I'm just gonna lay my pattern out and trace it out. They use this a lot in cosplay. It's super light, it's flexible. It's gonna work. It has to. Once the pieces were ready, we used contact cement to glue it all together. This stuff works great on EVA foam, but it's pretty toxic, so we always wear a respirator when using it. There we go. I uh, transferred all the holes onto my pattern. Now I'm gonna transfer those onto our thing and cut them out. I think it's pretty good. It's squishing a little bit this way, but that's pretty round. It's gonna work. What you got going? I'm remaking the hands again. So these are the 3D printed pieces. This thing all by itself weighs about nine grams. And then once we wrap the fabric on it, that plus the glue is another three grams. That's 12 grams per one of these. And there's three of them perfect. That's a lot of grams of weight. So I'm recreating them out of pink XPS foam and just sort of carving it and cutting it to the same shape and size. And this piece in comparison weighs less than one gram versus this nine grams. So Across all the fingers, that should be a lot lighter than it was before. And I really hope it works because this isn't the, the only idea I have left. Maybe he'll just have no hands. He lost them in the great <laughs> animatronic war. <laughs> I don't know, please work. The foam knuckles got a little more paint with some silver rub and buff to make them look more metallic. And then I used those and the new fingers to remake the hands again. This time though, I included the broken and missing fingers, which looked great. The heavier hand came in at just under 260 grams, and the new lighter one was about 140. All we can do is hope it's enough. 
here we are three days later <laughs> we've remade all the parts we're gonna test it and it better work <laughs> stay <laughs> that's a good sign yes no 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 but oh. all right what if we like I bent his arm. So okay. Instead of it being way out here, it's like in here a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. That works. Is it? Hey, there's no clicking this time. Okay. Yes. So, okay. 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 So we just have to bend the arm a little bit. We can do that. That makes sense because if it's fully extended, the force on the on the joint is a, is a lot heavier. So we're really cutting it close, <laughs> though. I think we're gonna have to be real careful with like whatever else we add. Yeah, but it works. You know what? If it doesn't work later, you saw it work here. <laughs> High five. Now that we're back on track, I can start working on the torso. So I made a template using some foam that we got in some packaging. This is half of his body. So that's gonna wrap around like that. So I'm gonna trace this onto our EVA foam. We'll double it up so we have both sides. And I think that should look pretty good. Now we're gonna glue this on and start marking and cutting the holes in it. So this piece right here is his underwear or, you know, his pelvis or whatever, I don't know what you call this. See, we 3D printed this out based on the model just like everything else, but it's not gonna fit because it's too small. This is a great example of when we turn one character into another character, their proportions don't always match up. Sometimes you just gotta wing it a little bit and change things around to make it fit, and this is one of those times. <laughs> it looks like a big diaper. Yep, but it fits. So I made it extra large, so I think maybe we'll trim it to about that much. Or we could just leave it and have him be wearing a diaper. We could also do that. It'd be <laughs> a, a much different character, but. <laughs> Look at our boy. <laughs> he's getting there. We painted all the insides black and he's starting to really take shape. What's wrong? Well, it's October 20th today, and we don't normally have this problem, but in one week, the FNAF movie comes out. A few days after that is Halloween, which we need to use this for. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're gonna get it done in time. Everything took way longer than we expected it to, and we did not expect to have to redo like the arms. Also, look at how much 3D printing filament we've gone through, and we didn't even use half the part. It's a bit like, we're so deep in time and money on this project, and I don't even know if it's gonna work. We haven't even done the head yet. You know, but at least like the head is the last big thing to do, right? It's just the head, it should be easy. We just gotta keep going. We 3D printed the head before we knew that we weren't gonna use all this stuff, so we do have it. And we scaled it up to match the same scale as all the rest of the body. And check this out, watch. It just so happens to fit over the skull perfectly. It is really heavy though. I'm not really expecting it to work. We're probably gonna have to make it out of foam, but let's test it out. I think we might have finally caught a break. That actually worked. So do we just use it as is? Yes. That's great. That's really good. For the jaw though, this thing is sort of really, really weak. So we're definitely not gonna 3D print something. Instead, we're gonna make this out of foam and we're gonna use a pattern from Deregular Sauce, who's a YouTuber who made a giant spring trap cosplay, probably the best spring trap anyone's ever made. So he's got a really good pattern. We're gonna use that, make it out of foam, and then I guess put the rest of it together. The pattern that we were going on was made for like a costume. So we cut a big neck hole in, and then we actually cut a line for the jawline. So the idea is it's gonna sit like right on top of his jaw like that. That should fit pretty well. The only issue now is the foam overlaps where the rest of the head piece is. So I think I'm gonna cut along this line and it'll make a nice curve to follow this curve. Hey, look, he's talking. <laughs> I 
To make his ears, we cut out the templates, trace them on the foam, and cut them out just like all the other pieces. Except these ones were a little different because we put some wire inside of the ears so that we could not only attach them to the head, but also bend them into a cool pose. We took these little pieces of wire and we bent them so that it would create some little feet so we can attach it to the head. So now I guess we just have to get fabric on these top head pieces and then we're gonna take everything back off and we're gonna paint it and wither it all. The paint job on these, Jamie, is incredible. Thanks. I love it. I love making things look old and gross. And our strategy has always been start by making it new and then make it gross instead of trying to make it gross from the beginning. And I just think the results come out like way better. It's awesome. It was finally time to put everything together. We started at the feet, which we painted metallic, and started working our way up from there. To attach the suit to the skeleton, I drilled some holes and ran a wire through the bones, and then attached the wire to the inside of the suit. This kept things nice and light while allowing us to position it exactly how we wanted. This project could have been a total failure, and there were several times where we thought it just wasn't going to work. But you just keep going. You push through the hard parts, do the best you can, and more often than not, you'll come out the other side having learned a few things and with something cool to show for it. Turning animatronics into other animatronics is a lot of fun, but you'll probably see us start to build a lot more of our own from scratch this year. Nothing could go wrong with that, right? Maybe we'll even open a pizzeria. To make his eyes, we needed to keep it really light, so we're using a styrofoam ball cut in half, and uh, a googly eye. The plastic part of the eye gets cut off, and we're gonna use that for the iris in the front, so we cut a hole in the styrofoam ball to fit it, cleared out the back, and then gave the eye a little paint job. He's got these eye rings that go in front of the eyeballs, which make no sense, but we stopped asking questions about Springtrap's suit a long time ago. We glued in the eyeballs and then made some eyelids out of foam and glued those in place as well. Finally, last but not least, my favorite part, all the little details. He looks amazing! Before we see if he actually works or not, we just want to say thank you for watching. This was a really big project for us. We had a bunch of problems, but we pushed through them, and we just really appreciate you guys watching the video. We have a bunch of extra arms left, so if this inspired you to make your own spring trap, let us know in the comments, and we'll pick some ones, paint them up, and send them to you. Oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, stay wicked. <laughs> I always come back. <laughs>
time is up.